Hi everyone, it's Melissa, and today I would like to share with you 10 books that I really want to reread. So obviously these are books that I have enjoyed, otherwise I probably wouldn't be wanting to read them again. Um, and so because these are some of my favorites, I thought I would share them with you. So the idea for this video all came about recently when I was re-watching the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And it really got me thinking about wanting to read Lord of the Rings again. So this was kind of like a weird domino where <laughs> um, when I'm working, I often like to wear headphones and listen to um, music with no words so that I can like type and stuff. So I listen to like a lot of classical music and also a lot of movie soundtracks. Lord of the Rings is one of my favorite movie soundtracks. Pat on the back to Howard Shore, he did an amazing job. But essentially I was um, working one day, listening to the Lord of the Rings soundtrack, and as I'm working I just can like feel myself starting to cry because the music was moving me. And as I'm listening to the song I was just like, oh man, I really want to watch that trilogy, trilogy again. Because I hadn't watched the Lord of the Rings since it had probably been like you know, eight years or something since I had watched those movies. So um, it had happened to be the um, Victoria Day weekend in Canada, so we had a long weekend. And I said, I decided, oh my gosh, it's a long weekend. We let's marathon one movie a night, the extended edition, which are like four hour plus movies. Um, so that's what we did. We rewatched the trilogy. And I love those movies so much. And basically, after I was in watching the movies, I was just overcome with a feeling of needing to reread The Lord of the Rings. I say that this is one of my favorite books, and it is. But when I was kind of thinking about the last time I read it, I couldn't quite remember. And I think it's probably been about 15 years since I read that book. If you are not familiar with Lord of the Rings, I am not going to explain it now because this this is a beast. This is a fantasy epic. It's a fantasy war epic is what it is. It's about friendship and about doing something bigger than yourself. And I love this book so much and I really want to reread it. Um, you'll notice I say book because this is not a trilogy. It is one book and... You can Google the reasons why Tolkien was basically forced to chop this into um, three parts, but it is one book. And that's why I haven't reread it, because this is well over, it's well over a thousand pages. And even though I love this book, that's daunting. But after rewatching the trilogy in the first time in almost a decade, it's time. I feel like it's time to revisit this. Another favorite book of mine that I would love to reread is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy um, by Douglas Adams. It's been so long since I've read this one that I'm actually really fuzzy on the details. So I remember the gist of it. It's about um, kind of like a very dull everyman, I guess you could say, named Arthur Dent very typical Brit and he through no want or adventurous spirit of his own because he really doesn't have any he gets whisked through the galaxy as earth is being destroyed by like bureaucratic aliens who are making way for like some intergalactic highway something like that this is the funniest book I've ever read. It is the first book, and maybe even the only book, that I laughed out loud while reading. And why this has jumped in my mind is back in January I read another Douglas Adams book, um, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, and while reading that it, it just reminded me how funny Douglas Adams is and how much I love his writing and his wit. And yeah, so I would really like to reread this um, at some point in the near future. 
um, this is technically kind of cheating because this is really five novels. This is just like the five novels in one. Um, but I kind of count it as one book in my brain because we have this like bind up of them. But really this is five novels. So when I said 10 books I want to reread, that was kind of not true because this is really five books. And it looks like I'm cheating again because the next thing on my list is also a series and it is the Anne of Green Gable series by Ellen Montgomery. This was basically my favorite series as a kid. I grew up reading these and they're very much part of my childhood. I also live in the Maritimes in Canada so I can really relate to like the landscape and even a little bit of the culture even though this is set very much in the past, um, there are these like maritime-isms <laughs> that still ring true today. So this is very much a comfort, homey read to me. It is about an orphan, if you're not familiar, um, called Anne Shirley. And an older brother and sister had applied to an orphanage to adopt a boy because they wanted a farmhand. Um, and a girl, this girl, was sent to them by mistake. And it's how she endears herself to them and to the whole village. And um, it's basically her, her coming of age story. And um, there are eight novels in this series. And I would like to get to all of them over the next, I don't know how long. But I feel like with spring and summer coming, there's just like a lot of nature writing in here. Um, and I just feel like seasonally... This is the right time to pick this up. The next book that I would like to read again is Watership Down by Richard Adams. This is a weird old book, but it was kind of wonderful. It It's about bunnies, but this book is very brutal and very much not for children. It follows a group of rabbits who have to leave their warren I can't remember why actually. Probably something to do with a farmer or plowing. I don't know. There's some reason where they have to abandon the warren um, to seek a new home and it follows their journey um, and they meet different like groups of rabbits along the way. So like different almost like rabbit societies that function very different from theirs because they have like their own culture and their own society, their own behaviors, um, because of the environments that they've had to live in and adapt to. It's just very hard to talk about this book because it's about rabbits and it sounds like it would be stupid, but it is gripping. The next book, book number five I think we're on now, is Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. This is a dystopian novel in a future where technology has kind of taken over, um, everyone's kind of addicted to their devices, and it's a future where um, firemen do not put out fires, they start them. And the fireman's job in this society is to burn books because books are illegal. And this story follows a fireman called Montag, Montag, however you pronounce his name, he meets people who challenge his views and he starts to learn about a, a previous reality where people weren't afraid and where books were, were allowed and, and information was shared. Um, I haven't read this book since high school, so... I don't remember everything about it, so that's why I would be really curious to see if it affects me as much now as it did then. The next book on my list, number six, is another book that I haven't read since high school, um, and it is Lord of the Flies by William Golding. Now, the reason that this kind of came back onto my radar is um, that my husband and I are, are currently doing a rewatch of the Lost series is one of our favorite um, favorite TV shows ever and if you know anything about Lord of the Flies um, like Lost definitely has those vibes so this is about 
a group of boys. I forget if they're scouts or what they are, but um, they're plane crashes or shipwrecks or something like that. And they are stranded on this island with no adults to take care of them. And it is about them forming their own little society of kids. And it all starts out innocently enough and then things get ugly. And it's very much like a microcosm of like adult society. It's a book that's very tense and foreboding. And if I remember it correctly, like, I feel like the buildup in this book was slow, but completely captivating all the way through. So the next book, number seven, I think, sorry, I'm doing an awful job of keeping track, um, is Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. This might be like the best children's book I've ever read. It's definitely up there. I don't need to explain what this is, right? Um, but if you haven't read the book and you're only familiar with it just through pop culture or because of the god-awful Disney movie, okay, I'm sorry because I'm a fan of Disney. I love Disney movies, but the Peter Pan movie is like, it's like the word, it's so bad. It's bad. It's bad. The racism, the absolutely awful female characters. It's just bad. But this is great. So if you're only familiar with this because of the Disney movie, movie um, I think you would be pleasantly surprised. This book is smart. It There's a lot to dissect. Um, I think people sometimes write off children's books and don't think there's much to them, but there's a lot to this book. I'm looking forward to rereading it in a more analytical way and really thinking about the story even though the story just in and of itself is just a joy unlike the movie that kind of has just like crappy characters and is just kind of kind of garbage um this has really interesting characters and peter is less of a like yay we're gonna go have an adventure hero and he's he's kind of he's kind of a jerk and but like in a very like interesting way. Anyway, if you haven't actually read the book, please go read Peter Pan. It's great. So number eight on my list is Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. So this is a novella and it is tight. There is not a wasted word in this book. It's about these two men who are kind of like farmhands, um, this is set during like the 30s, I believe. Well, it's a Steinbeck, so yeah, it's set during the 30s. Um, so like, this is Depression era. And they kind of hop from farm to farm looking for work as they can find it. And I don't want to say much more than that if you're not familiar with the story. It is a really intense book um, about what happens when there's fear and misunderstanding and judgment. But yeah, I don't want to say too much about it um, because I feel like it would spoil everything. And you should just go read it. It's very much a slap in the face type of a book. Like you put it down, you're like, what just happened? But it is well worth the read. So for number nine, I have another um, novella. This one is Animal Farm by George Orwell. And this is another tiny book that packs a punch. So this is a book um, set on a farm and the protagonists are the animals on the farm. And it start, starts out as a normal farmyard and through the book, the pigs start to take charge and they're trying to create this like utopian, like equal society among all of the animals in the farmyard, but things go south and it it follows kind of the dynamics, the, the politics of what is happening in this farmyard as the pigs take more and more control. And while you're reading this, you, you're, you forget that 
you're like this book is talking about like horses and goats and stuff like you care about these animals um the fact that they're animals doesn't even really seem to register and it's just really interesting how quickly their society is just kind of like enveloped in fascism and although that happens very quickly in the book i mean it kind of has to because it's a short book but although um everything kind of falls apart very very quickly the timeline seems very realistic so the last book on my list number 10 is the maltese falcon by dashiell hammett um i've mentioned this before but i love books from the 20s and 30s i also really love mystery and detective stories and this just like checks all the boxes for me in terms of like a great like I was gonna say film noir but this isn't a film but like detective noir and it's been long enough since I read this book that I don't remember all the beats like I don't remember the twists and the turns and the double crosses and the bluffing like I feel like when I do read this again I'll enjoy it just as much as the first time because I literally can't remember exactly how the story unfolds so I think I'll still be surprised reading it a second time but I do remember kind of like the main thing, <laughs> the main crux of at least how the story gets started. And that is um, it follows a detective or private eye um, called Sam Spade and his partner. And this woman hires them to track down her sister who's run off with this man who she thinks is no good or a criminal or something. And... As Sam Spade's partner is basically tailing this, this guy, this um, suspect, if you will, I guess, um, he's killed and the guy that he's tailing is killed. And I think like Spade ends up as a suspect. So he's having to try to unravel the mystery um, about like, who's responsible for killing them, um, the mystery surrounding this, the falcon statuette that's the center of the story, um, the real deal with this woman that's hired them because she's not being forthcoming. So he's having to figure all of this out while trying to evade arrest. So those are 10 books that I would like to reread. If you've read and enjoyed any of them, please uh, let me know in the comments or if you haven't read any of these and are intrigued by um, anything I've had to say about them, please let me know that as well. And I'd also like to hear about um, books that you have reread or would like to reread. So as always, thank you for watching. I hope everyone is doing well and we will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.